And good morning. It's Saturday, the 22nd of March 2014. Welcome to today's United Kingdom talk. Here, the clock hasn't chimed, does it? Oh, there it is. Right on cue. I think it was a few seconds slow then. How amateurish is that? We can't have a clock that's a few seconds slow. Welcome along, boys and girls. Spring is in the air. Yes, spring has arrived to the UK. At least in its date term, anyway. I mean, to be honest, spring arrived a few weeks ago. We have, as I said uh, on, on, on many previous shows in the last few weeks, we haven't had a winter this year. I mean, we really haven't. A couple of odd cold days, but apart from that, it's been fine. Indeed, last weekend, uh, when I wasn't too well, as you remember, I, I was missing last weekend. AW, what's, what's that thing when you disappear from the army? Is it AWOL or something like that? Oh, um, missing without leave or so. Yeah, I was missing without leave last week due to due to a bit of a heavy cold. But that that has completely gone now. It's just left me with a slight throat, but that's another problem altogether, I think. So uh, spring is here, boys and girls. And to celebrate spring this morning, I've done two things already. Oh, yes, I cut the grass this morning. No, oh, no, already at this time of day. I've cut the grass. And are you ready for this? Don't all faint. I've changed my toothbrush head. Oh yes, I have a Oral B uh, Triumph. I think it's called a Triumph uh, toothbrush, and you change the heads. Why are those blooming heads so expensive? It's like you know, fifteen quid for four heads, and they come with these little coloured circle things that you're supposed to put on. You know, if if you're a family. So you'd have, you'd have a red one for mummy, I don't know, a blue one for daddy, a pink one for little girl, and a green one for little boy, or something like that. Well, of course, I don't use those. So they go straight in the bin. And I generally change my toothbrush heads every four months or so. So I remember, I remember changing the last one just before my holiday to the States. Uh, because it's very important, health-wise, it's very important to keep a clean toothbrush. You don't want those nasty little bacterias and viruses entering under your gums, boys and girls. God knows there's enough germs in that mouth of yours, especially yours. I can, I can, oh, I can, I can smell the germs coming through my equipment here, I can. It does make me wonder, you know, certainly on the microphone, you know, I mean... The germs that come out your mouth, they must get stuck somewhere in this microphone, mustn't they? And uh, <laughs> forevermore they are breeding inside my foam. Oh, and they're probably breeding inside your mouths at the moment, boys and girls. Please make sure you have a clean toothbrush at all times. Yes, I changed my one uh, back uh, just before I went on holiday in January. Uh, just, just so that if my nephew happened to accidentally walk into my bathroom, he would notice that his uncle was a clean living old man. And not one of these people that make their toothbrush last months and months because they're tight. And that's the last thing I am tight, boys and girls. It really is. I like to spend a little bit of money, especially on a new toothbrush. So remember that for health issues. You'll love this. You'll love the way I'm linking into this. For health issues, OK, make sure you change your toothbrush regularly. And one of the reasons I bring up the issue of health is that a, a radio station is now taking this programme each week. Health Radio UK, good evening. Oh, good morning. What time are we on there? Seven, I think it's 7pm. Health Radio UK are now taking this programme and broadcasting it on Tuesday night. So a very, very warm welcome for you. Uh, that means this programme is now exactly 57 minutes to comply with your requests. All right? So Saturday's show will always be 57 minutes now. Or at least at 57 minutes, I will say goodbye to people on Health Radio because they, they will get the first 57 minutes. So welcome, welcome, welcome to people on Health Radio UK. A couple of messages are coming in already this morning, boys and girls. Good morning to voiceover artist. We know who you are. Yes, it's you again, isn't it? I know. The man with a deep voice. Hello, Chris. How are you? And he says, Chris Redden, please report to hair and makeup. Your nose is shiny. I hope not. Well, that might be that oil I've been putting on it. I've got this bio oil stuff. 
okay, uh, that my best mate Ronnie said that I'm to rub it into all my lines and they will decrease. I don't believe a word of it, to be honest. And this stuff, not how expensive it is. It's like £10 a bottle. However, <coughs> I've been using it for about three months now. Has anyone sort of noticed any difference? Are the, are the lines a little less accented or, or what? Is that, that? No, really. Um... So I've been rubbing this into my face, and actually the face feels quite nice afterwards. But you have to be careful, Mr. Voiceover Artist. You put too much on, and your face is shining until it sinks into your head. So maybe that's what's happened this morning. I might have put too much bio oil on, and my face is shining, is it? He says, attention, attention, will the owner of a brown Ford Cortina please move your vehicle? You are blocking the wheelchair ramp entering Mr. Reardon's studio. Not on the wheelchair yet. Not yet. Hopefully never. But you never know. You never know what's going to happen. I've got trouble with the feet at the moment. Haven't I? Yes. I've got trouble with my feet. Trouble with my throat. But don't worry. It's it's all being dealt with. It's being dealt with. I shall tell you about it later in the show, OK? Uh, Ford Cortina, yeah. I always wanted a Ford Cortina. Never had one. I remember... Um, when I first passed my driving test, that that's why I wanted a, what I wanted a Ford Cortina, and uh, who was it? I think it was my sister's husband actually, who wasn't her husband at the time. We went to this place in Barnes, um, which is in Southwest London, and looked at this uh, Ford Cortina to see if I should buy that. And uh, he, he told me not to buy it because it was bl I think blue smoke coming out of the exhaust or something. Um, which which uh, which apparently meant that oil was burning away, you know, a little bit a little bit worrying really. Good morning to Terry H. She says, "Good morning, Chris, from a sunny Leeds." Yeah, it's sunny here today. It's a little bit cold outside, but it's sunny, very nice, and that's why I cut the grass this morning. Oh, it's nothing better than going out there early morning to cut the grass and that lovely smell, smell of grass, unless of course you accidentally go over with the lawnmower some dog or cat waste. And then the lawnmower seems to increase the smell 100 fold and it comes out because, of course, the blades have cut up all the mess, haven't they? And they've sucked it. Oh, it's awful. <coughs> we don't like <laughs> we don't like lawn mowing dog or cat mess. Not that my cat makes much mess at all. She's a very clean creature. She buries all hers. My Katie downstairs. Um, uh, Terry says, Chris, which online ads did you pay for? Was it Facebook ads? Very tempted based on your review in a previous show. No, it was YouTube ads. OK, YouTube ads. Um, so when I do uh, a short video and it goes up online da, 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 and you make it live and everything, that's good. A little box comes up next to it and it says, make an ad for this video. And it's kind of a wizard type thing, and you follow it, click that, and click that, and click, and it follows it through, and then you are, it asks you how much you want to spend, and you tell it how much you want to spend, and you click, and it goes on YouTube videos. You know when you're watching a YouTube video, and sometimes you get, well, there's different methods. Sometimes you get a little bit at the bottom, won't you, with a couple of lines saying, you know, buy, I don't know, buy this product from so-and-so, something like that. Sometimes you get the the video ad that plays before the video that you want to watch, yeah? So it's various different types. And I think you can either choose the type or they choose it for you. I can't remember now, but they were YouTube ads, not Facebook ads. I've tried Facebook ads before, to be honest, didn't work, okay? Didn't make any difference at all to the numbers of people watching the show, but the YouTube ones did. Do you, do you wanna, are you interested? I suppose, I think you are, aren't you? Just a minute, let me find out. Um, Let's have a look at uh, uh, the last long show we did. That would have been two weeks ago, and I did take an ad out for that, okay? So, generally, the long show that we do on the Saturday, at the moment it's live, well, at the moment it's live if you're watching it live at the moment. How do you know you're live at the moment? Well, have a look at the cock. It's just uh, 10 past 12. March the 22nd, 2014. If that's the time where you are now, you are indeed with us live, OK? Um, right, so... All right. So the last live show that I had has got... 
had 6,048 viewers, right? Okay. There's, there's a lot more to it than that. Now, generally, one of my shows, that's, that's once the live show is finished, then a few hours later it goes up as a recording. So just over 6,000 people watch the recording, all right? Now, um, you get various different... Uh, th this is broken down for you in various different ways. Um, uh, one of the ways is the area that watches the show more than anywhere else. And in this case, it was, thing, Argentina. 612 views in Argentina, right? And then the list goes down. Uh, Turkey, 566. Brazil, 439. Mexico, 308. Venezuela, 293. Russia, 274. And it goes on like that. That doesn't mean that all those people watched the entire show, okay? Some people, yes indeed, would have watched the entire show. Some people might have watched 10 seconds and then decide they didn't like it and switched off. You know, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to say to you six, over 6,000 people watched the whole show because that's, that's just a lie. There's no point in me lying, okay? So that's how it works. Now, it, it doesn't tell you how many people watched the whole show and how many people watched a bit of the show, but... It gives you an average, right? So out of 612 people in Argentina that watch the show, they watched it for an average of 5 minutes and 29 seconds, which sounds dreadful. <laughs> but if you remember at school, averages are very, very misleading, you know, and, 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 and I can't really... So it could, that could have meant that 300 people watched 30 minutes of the show, which, which, is, which is good. I think that's good, right? Um, you can go sort of along these numbers and if you've got somewhere that hasn't watched it very didn't have many people watching it then it's a lot easier to see how long um, people will have watched it for um, let, let's, let's find one there there we are, look two people in Austria watched it for 80 minutes so that could have been 40 minutes each do you see what i mean so as as the numbers get less as less people watch it in a country uh there's one here look in the cameroon in the cameroon right two people watched it for an hour and 13 minutes all right so as as you go down the list it becomes easier to understand but certainly that's six six thousand two hundred now normally on a live show, once the recordings got up, there would have been probably about 80 to 100 people watch it afterwards. Right? So you see the difference the ad has made. Quite a huge difference. And I do believe it's worth doing, Terry. All right? He said, um, Terry says, uh, well, that definitely works. Uh, thanks for the info, Chris. Yes. All right, so help that works. Uh, good morning to Marge this morning. Who says, uh, I like the countdown timer. Yeah, we've had that a couple of weeks now, Marge. Is it, our time has changed, so I'm now watching at 7 a.m. So that's an hour later for you, isn't it, Marge? Um, next Sunday, not next week, okay, not next Saturday, next Sunday, so not, not tomorrow, the one after, our hours go forward. Our time clocks go forward one hour next Sunday. All right, Mark, is it Sunday or Saturday? No, I think it's Saturday, isn't it? Saturday into Sunday. Saturday into Sunday. Yep, yeah, so... Saturday... So next week, the show will be the same time, and the week after, it'll be an hour... later. <laughs> I get so confused of all these clocks and bits and pieces. Uh, anyway, back to that subject of uh, no winter this year. Um, it, it's all very well. You know, I've had a wonderful time. Hardly had the heating on. Hardly had the heating on, which means my gas bill was way, way lower than it was last year. It's like something like 40 to 50% lower than it was last year. So I'm quite pleased about the old gas bill. The electric one is another story, which I'm going to come to in a minute. Because I'm, I'm not pleased. I'm not pleased at the moment. Um, the, the, the other thing with not having a harsh winter is that I do wonder if we're going to get a load of insects in the garden this year. Now, do you know, last year, I don't remember seeing a single wasp in the garden last year. Isn't that weird? 
Not once did I see a wasp last year. Not not on one single occasion. Saw a few bees, but no wasps. I hate wasps. Nasty things that attack you. And yes, they do. People say, oh, ignore them. They won't come near you. They do come near you. Wasps do come near you. Bees don't. They might come and have a little buzz around. In fact, this week, and I don't know those of you that are superstitious or not, but this week, on two separate occasions, once it was on my own, Okay, and the other time Ronnie was in the house, on two separate occasions, a bee, a big fat bumblebee, flew into the house. It flew into the window, it came, it flew in the living room, a little look around, bzzz, went around the room a couple of times, and then flew out back for the same way it came as well. Bees do not attack you. Leave them alone, they're not interested in you. I think they're wonderful creatures. I've got, I have flowers in my garden usually. And I've uh, got some daffodils and crocuses uh, at the moment. In the, oh, the crocuses have died now. I've still got daffodils in the garden. And I do get bees in it. And you can go right up to them and observe what they're doing. It's fantastic. Wonderful creatures and they will not harm you. Just don't start mucking around with them. You know, po you start poking them with a pen or something like that. They're going to hurt you, aren't they? Leave them alone. Leave the poor bees alone. All right. Uh, good morning to Mark. Mark says, where is the interesting object behind you? What one? Oh, haven't we got an interesting object today? Oh, what can I put there? I've got nothing in here now. Uh, I've got nothing in here to put behind me today. Oh, because we usually have an interesting object behind us. Those of you who are listening to the show only, okay, you can watch as well. If you want to watch the show as well as listen to it, just go to the main website, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk, and you'll find a little link up there to a YouTube video, all right? There's plenty of people who just listen to the show, so I shall describe everything in great detail. For example, I am about 55 stone in weight, great big fat head, and I'm as ugly as sin. So that's why you've probably chosen to listen and not watch, isn't it? Sorry, no interesting object behind me this morning, Mark. Do apologise for that. And uh, Terry says, I'm so afraid of wasps. Oh, they're horrible, horrible, horrible things. And you're right, they do attack. They do attack. You're sitting there minding your own business. Suddenly this wasp comes towards you and attacks you. And they're ugly. Aren't they ugly wasps? Oh, those little yellow eyes, they scare me. He says, I love bees and they do leave you alone. They are very important. Yes, um, if you get a bee's nest in the garden... It is supposed to be very, very lucky to do that. You know, bees are um, uh, dying off for some reason. They're not quite sure what it is. They're very, very, very important to the ecology of the whole world. If you do get a bees garden, certainly uh, bees wasps, uh, sorry, bees nest here in the UK, in your garden, you are not allowed to touch it. OK, they are protected. So there we are. Now, uh, some some news about the shows. Uh, of course, this is the live show. All right. If you're watching a recording of this and you do want to join us live on Saturday afternoons at 12 o'clock UK time, then uh, just go to unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. At the top there, you'll find a link that will take you directly to the live show on Saturdays and you can join us there. And indeed, uh, if you're with us at that time, you can join in by either telephoning the show. OK, there's a local London number, which I'll give you in a minute. Or there's a Skype as well. If you've got Skype, you can Skype in and talk to me. I have the, the red phone standing by for calls, if we have time for any today. There's so much to tell you today, I might not take any calls. Unless, of course, you ring, which I will, of course, take them. But there's lots to tell you about today. All right, so you can do that. Um, if you have iTunes, you can subscribe to the audio version of the show, completely free of charge. Just open your iTunes thing, go to the podcast section, OK, and type in United Kingdom Talk. You'll find it there. Hit the subscribe button and then you'll get the new show uh, whenever it's available. All right. Um, and the short videos. OK, so I also have been doing short videos, like two or three minutes long. Uh, you can find those at youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. Whenever there's a short video, it will come up there. Now, I have been doing those daily. I'm going to cut back a little bit on those, all right, because they're taking a little bit too much time up at the moment. I think I'm going to cut back a little bit of those, and I might even make them a little bit more newsy. So, you know, if I, if I come in here um, sort of 
notice a little news story. I thought, oh, that'd be interesting to talk about. Then I might do it. But that means they they will be probably come later than earlier because they were going up at midnight. Yeah, you know, I do them the day before, and then at midnight I'll let them go. Right. So I think what I'll do um, in future. They might be there at midnight or they might be a little bit later in the day, you know, so I get up and have a quick look at the newspaper. and I'm, Oh, that'd be interesting to talk about. Then I make a short video and put it up there. Just just something new to try. All right. A little bit newsy news and comment sort of thing. So any suggestions on that? Then you can send those in in an email. There's an email address if you ever want to join in. Be lovely to hear from you. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. And also with the YouTube videos, you can subscribe to those as well. All free of charge. Why is it all free of charge? Because no one's going to pay for this old rubbish, are they? Let's be honest. No one's, <laughs> no one's going to pay for this old rubbish. So you can hit the subscribe button on there as well. So it's youtube.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's the YouTube channel. Hit subscribe whenever there's a new thing. As long as you set up the emails, you get an email. Hello, there's a new thing from Chris. And you can watch it. And join in as well. All right. So uh, this morning, as I say, I've cut the grass and the dishwasher dishwasher has word into action. Now, I only use the dishwasher now during the daytimes. And there is a reason for that. Do you remember those of you that have been with us a while? Do you remember last year? I told you that they kept ringing up to replace my electricity meter. And at first, I, I thought, oh, right, OK, well, there's nothing wrong with the old one. Anyway, let's go back a little bit further. About a year and a half, two years ago, I changed my... It, oh, what's happened over there? Just a minute. Something's come up over there. One second. <coughs> That's better. Uh, a, a couple of years ago, I changed my electricity supplier. All right. Going back further than that, in 2007, I think it was, I had solar electricity panels installed. Right. I've got two types of solar panels on my roof. I've got the solar panel that makes hot water. OK. And some solar panels that make electricity. There are two types of solar panels. And I've got them both on my roof. First of all, I had the hot water one. I was pleased with that. Then I thought I had the electricity one, so I put those up in 2007. Well, I didn't put them up, you know. I mean, come, come on, be honest. Can you see me climbing all over the roof, eh? Banging in nails and putting little bits of wire together? Not me, dear. Not me. So, had those installed. They were fed into the um, electricity system, all right? And I had an old type of electricity meter, the one with the wheel that goes round, all right? And I just remember when when he first put them in, he said, right, that's it, come and watch this, Chris. Because we're on first name terms. Whenever I have workmen here, we are on first name terms. So he took me to the electricity meter cupboard he said, can you see that? And I'm looking at this meter. I said, yeah. He said, well, look, look, look at it. Anything different? I said, oh, it's going backwards. He said, yes. He said, whenever the sun is out and you're not using the electricity that you're generating, it will turn the meter backwards and feed it into the grid. So you save money like that. Right. So you never lost out. If you were making loads of electricity, which you, you, generally, when it's light outside, if you've got solar panels, you are always making electricity. OK, all the time the sun is out or all, sorry, no, all the time it is daylight, you are making electricity. I want to point these things out to people because a lot of people think, oh, they don't really work and all this. Now, listen, I've had them now for several years and they work. If I was to ever move from this lovely place that I live in, then one of the first things I would do is put up solar panels straight away. Absolutely. I would kind of include it. If, if, if I was buying a house for, say, I don't know, hundred thousand pounds right i would say right well i will need a hundred and ten thousand pounds so i can put up solar panels as well that's how much i believe in these things i know because i've got them they work 
all the time it's light outside, they are making electricity. Right? When the sun is out, they make much, much more of electricity. So, when the sun's out, if you're doing lots of stuff... Now, the sun is out today, right? I'm in my studio. I've got two studio lights on in the, uh, in the living room, in, in, the, uh, in our little studio. Uh, I've got one, two, two computers working. I've got three screens in front of me. I've got the main lights on in here. Um, the dishwasher's on downstairs. Okay? So, I'm using probably all the electricity that I'm making. Right? If... If you were not using the electricity they were making, it would go back into grid and turn the meter backwards, right? So what it's doing is kind of using the national grid as a battery, yeah? Do you get it? It's almost like, you know when you charge up batteries, so you plug them in and they charge up, the electricity goes into it. Well, my electricity is going into the grid, so it's kind of using that as a battery. So what happens to that electricity? Right. Basically, it goes into the grid and the electric company sell it to someone else. That's how it works. So it goes into the grid. Oh, we've got this electricity. We we'll sell it to someone else. So they sell it to someone else and they make money from it. As well as turning my meter backwards, there is another meter in my electric cupboard which tells me in a given period of time how much electricity I've generated, right? And the government, with a system called FIT, which stands for feed-in tariffs, pay me a certain amount of money for each unit of electricity I generate, whether I use it or not, right? So, in January, if my meter said, Zero, 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 zero. And this happens four times a year. It happens on the 31st of March, 31st of June, 31st of September, and 31st of December, or October, or September. It's every three months, right? So every three months, I read that meter. I send my information to um, an electricity company, and then they send me a check. That's how it works. Now, I had my system installed in 2007. At that time, the government were paying you 50 50% 50 of the total cost of installing the system. Right? At that time, it would have cost me about £19,000 to put this system on my roof. Okay? So I paid about £9,000. That's what it was in those days. Now, you can get the same system on your roof for about seven, seven and a half thousand pounds So it's cheaper now to do it. And that, that's without any 50% back. Okay? So that's how it was then. They also paid you a small amount of money for the feed-in tariff. I can't remember the exact amount. As time went on, the feed-in tariff went up, and at one point it was something like 48 pence a unit, which was really good, really good. Nowadays, it's half that, OK? I think it's something like 25p a unit or something like that. So I, I got a, a check, right? I got a check um, for the period to December the 31st, which I haven't cashed yet, £12.56. It's not all that, is it? £12.56. I'll get two of those, and the other two will probably be for about 60 quid. So it's worth doing, I suppose, in a year, I probably get about £100 for all the electricity that I generate. All right? So I get that, as well as using it during the daytime myself. Now, very shortly after NPower took my electricity over... Um, oh, Terry's looking into this. Terry, can you find out what what I got in 2007 for the feed-in tariff? 2007. Can you see if you can find that out for me? It, it's it's quite low. I think it, it, it is quite low. So if you could have a look at that for me, Terry. I see you've done some work already. I'll read that out in a minute. Now, NPower, um, shortly after they took aft over my electricity, um, a few months after that, they wanted to change the meter. 
And I thought, well, there's nothing wrong with that one. Oh, I'll deal with it another time. Anyway, a couple of weeks, and it and it was a phone call. It was a it was a message left on my answer run. And I, you know, you think, oh, you know, who, who, who do you think you are ringing my phone? Because I can't stand businesses ringing my phone. I've even taken off the answer phone downstairs now. I'm fed up with businesses ringing me all the time, right? Uh, and then another phone call and I thought oh they're a bit eager to do this and I thought well I'll deal with it another time and then another message and I thought why are they so eager to change that blooming meter and then letters started coming anyway because of the eagerness that they appeared to have in changing my meter I thought no you can blooming well wait why do they want to change that meter? And then it suddenly dawned on me. Maybe the new meters don't go backwards. Right? So I ignored it. My God, there were two or three phone calls per week at one point. Trying to change this blooming meter. And letters, I've had about four, I had about four or five letters. My mate Ronnie says, why don't you just ring them up and explain the situation? I said, no, you're not going to ring them up. Anyway, put it off for a while. And then eventually, in November last year, I got a letter um, saying that they'd made a date to come and change the meter. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have to deal with this now. It was the first time, you know, the letter said, we are coming on, da 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 so they'd spent, you spent, they'd spent a good year trying to make an appointment. Terry, you might even understand what I'm talking about here. OK, so I rung them up and I said, look, I've got solar panels. I noticed that when I'm making too much electricity, it turns the meter backwards. Will the new meter do this? Oh, yes, sir. Right. OK. Oh, well, fair enough then. Um, yeah. OK, I'll make sure I'm in that day. And that was that. All right. So the day comes, bloke turns up, nice bloke. I said, um, hello. I said, um, just before you start work there, you know I've got solar panels on the roof. He said, all right, okay. I said, you switched them off there because he's got to switch them off. Otherwise, you, otherwise you can get um, the electricity even come back down. Although, although the, the solar panels in this country have a system so that if the power goes down, right, if your electricity from the grid goes down, then it automatically shuts off any electricity it's making. And the reason for that is, if there's a bloke working in a hole, right, and he cuts it, he's got to do the wires, right, so he, he, he turns the electricity off at the grid, and then he starts playing with the wires. You don't want your electricity coming back down there because he'd get electrocuted. So all, the, all our systems are set to cut off if there's a power interruption from the outside, all right? And... I said, that the meter will go backwards, won't it? He said, yeah, a red light will come on on the meter if you're not drawing any electricity. Um, one of those things would be if you're making electricity, then obviously you're not drawing it. So a red light will come on. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Carry on. So he's put this new meter in. And sure enough, you know, I noticed when it was daylight. Um a lot of the time, the little red light was on. Sometimes it would be flashing. If it's flashing, that indicates you're drawing electricity from the mains, OK? And if you're doing a lot in the house, maybe you've got the Hoover on, 2,000 watts, you've got the dishwasher on, 2,000 watts, you've got the oven on, 2,000 watts, but that's 6,000 watts. If I'm, if I'm only making 2,000, then I'm drawing in four, aren't I? Get it? Because you've got to make up... So sometimes it would be flashing, even if the sun was out, depending on what I'm doing. I didn't think anything more of it. Now, I keep a close eye on all my bills. Electricity, gas, I send them a meter reading every month. Um, and, and I constantly watch my bills. And I noticed the electricity bills went up by about 50%, 50 and I'm thinking, blimey, well, what did I do that month? I must have done something. That was November. Anyway, December was the same again. January was the same. 
and I'm thinking, this this can't be right. So one day I turned everything off. It was a sunny day, turned everything off. So the red lights come on the meter and I made a meter reading in the morning. And then I went back in the afternoon and took another read, meter reading and it hadn't gone up. But it hadn't gone backwards either. And I'm thinking, that meter's not going backwards. It's not moving. It's not going up. But it's not going back. Then I started turning things on at night. And sure enough, the light started flashing and the meter started going forward. So I rung them up. And this girl on the phone, a bit short she was. And uh, I explained the situation. I said, well, the meter's not going back. She said, well, it's not supposed to go back. There, but there must have been a fault on it. And I'm thinking, no, there wasn't a fault on it. You know, that was an analog meter. That's how they work. Switch the current and it goes backwards. Make too much... Sorry, that's wrong. Make too much current and it goes backwards. It makes sense to me, doesn't it, you? There can't have been a fault on it. She said, anyway, it's illegal for it to go backwards. I said, well, that's what I was told. She says, no. She says, not how it is. She said, that's how it works. It won't go forward, you know, when you're making too much electricity. But you won't go... I said, well, what about all that electricity I'm generating? She says, well, you get a payment from the FIT. I said, yeah, but I was also... It was also going backwards, saving me money. So during the day, it would go backwards. And at night time, it would come forwards. And then I would almost buy my own electricity back again. Or sort of, if you see what I mean. But I wouldn't be because I'd already s kind of sold it. But it, it, the way it would work is that because you're putting this electricity down the meter, right? And then taking it back again, you're using it as a battery. Get it? So I'm giving them electricity. No, it's not allowed. So anyway, I put the phone down, very disappointed. And then I went on the internet and started looking at some of the forums. And it seems there is a lot of people that this has happened to. They get their old analog meter changed for the new digital ones. And it's got some sort of mechanism in it that doesn't allow it to go backwards. It goes forwards. You can stop it by making too much electricity, but it doesn't go backwards. So I'm losing out. But that's how it is. That's just the way it is. And there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm really disappointed by that. Really disappointed. I'm actually giving them electricity. Now, searching further in the forums, it would seem that all oh, there's, there's many, many different electricity uh, companies here in the UK. There are the big six. Uh, N Power, Southeastern, British Gas, and uh, three others. I can't remember the others. It doesn't matter anyway. Uh, but there doesn't seem to be a general um, rule by which they all stick. They all seem to have their own rules. Some of them have sent people bills, okay, for the electricity that they haven't been buying. And I'm thinking, well, I hope that doesn't matter to me, happen to me. And other people are like, oh, well, you know, don't worry about it. It just depends on your electricity company. It's a ridiculous situation. Absolutely ridiculous. But I don't see how they could take someone to court for having the meter going backwards and not buying the electricity. Because, you know, you are giving them your electricity during the daytime, and taking it back at night. You're not stealing anything, are you? You're not. How are you stealing anything? Because the moment that old meter got back to the position that it was in before you started giving them electricity, you're buying it from them again. And I had a good look around, and, and I couldn't find anyone that had been taken to court or anything like that for this, obviously because of that. I think they're trying it on. I think they're trying it on. So, uh, a very interesting situation there, and uh, I'll keep you informed of anything else that goes on there. Um, I have a feeling, you know, the meat has been changed, and that's it, and it'll be just left at that, I think. But it's just, it's, it's annoying that that's happened, really. So, I'm losing out now. I'm paying more for my electricity, because I, that meter doesn't go back anymore. All right, um... 
Terry says he works in British Gas New Energy. He can't find the uh, uh, FIT rate for 2007. He says, um, solar panels do work, but I bet you've got a very good feed in tariff. No, it's, I haven't got the 41p tariff. I got mine before that. Okay, it's, is it just 12p now? I don't know what it was. Um, did You had a look, did you? Let's have a look. Yeah, I'm going to have a quick look. Um, Uh, no, we're not going to find this, are we? Will it be on a piece of paper somewhere or something like that? Feeding tariffs, United Kingdom, 2000. Ah, just 2008 it goes to, doesn't it? Let's have a look. Twenty years. No, this is this is it. Oh, 2009. It's got. There's several other systems being installed no earlier than 2009. See, mine was 2007. Uh, so mine was 2007. I don't know if it's on. Just a minute. Let's have a look. I've got papers and things in here. Uh, look at this lot here. Meter readings. Oh, Southern Electric, though. Because Southern Electric are the company that pay mine. Visiting our website. Changes to terms and conditions. That's 11. No, it's not that, is it? Oh, what's this one here? No, can't find this. What you got? I've got a... I've got a... I've only got a... F f four kilowatt system, Terry. I don't think I'm going to find this, am I? Uh oh, it was interesting as well. Oh, it was what's Mark? Has Mark found something? How did you know how tall she was? No, short. She was a bit sharp on the phone to me. Wasn't very pleasant at all. Miserable old cow. Now, what's this? Oh, here we are. Here we are. Look at this. I found it, Terry. Oh, it's even less than twelve, mate. <laughs> uh, feeding tariff agreement. Confirmation date, 2011. Right, you ready for this? You ready? You ready for this, Terry? 9.4 pence a kilowatt hour. And I get an export tariff of 3.1 pence a kilowatt hour. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 and a half pence. Ha, 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 ha. 12 and a half pence. And uh, in when, when it was the Labour government that bought one in, that was 48 pence. There we are. We found that out. I'm glad I found that out anyway. Eligibility period, I'll get that for 17 years. And I've got a total generation capacity of 2.9 kilowatts. Although I've never seen it go more than 2.4. Alright. Is that interesting you, Terry? I'm glad we found that out. So there, so if you ever have solar uh, panels put up, boys and girls... OK, and you've got one of those old meters, you bloody well hold on to it as long as possible. OK, very, very important. <laughs> there we are. So there are ways around that. Um, that that, that well, I say ways around it. There are things you can do. So what I basically do now is I wait until the daytime, right? Preferably when the sun's out nice and loud. I'm sorry you keep hearing that buzzing. That's my mobile phone. Let's just move it over here. <coughs> um, and the ways around it is literally, very simply, wait until daytime to put your gadgets on. Like if you're doing, obviously, you know, if you're at home at night, you know, you can't. You can't not turn the television on and things like that. Not use your computer. But the more stuff you can do during the daytime when the sun is out, or when it's light, then the better off you are. So I now, I don't do any washing or any dishwasher or anything like that. Nighttime, that does not go on. And they're the real pullers of electricity. You got um, tumble dryer. I got a tumble dryer. Never ever use it. I never ever use a tumble. I could give that away quite happily. 
don't use a tumble dryer but that draws an awful lot of energy your dishwasher your cooker your oven and your kettle and heating are probably the big ones now kettle well i mean unless you want to make a big flask of tea and it never tastes the same does it big flasks of tea during the daytime you know that's out of the window as long as it's telly but stuff like the dishwasher and the washing machine um maybe long a lot of cooking you should do that all during the daytime so you're using that electricity that you're making and not sending it down the grid so it involves a bit of a lifestyle change and i've already made that now no problem at all you know does it actually matter that you've got dirty dishes sitting in a dishwasher all night long of course it doesn't of course it doesn't doesn't make any difference at all does it so i now do all that during the daytime i cut the grass this morning well you would cut the grass during the daytime anyway so all that time you're using as much electricity during the day as you possibly can and as least electricity during the um uh night time as you can so that's one way another way is to use batteries to store the electricity this is horrendously expensive it's really really expensive um to have that sort of setup somewhere not only that but the batteries last about 10 years and actually it's probably not worth doing you know it 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 hurts me it really hurts me to know that i'm giving electricity away to the electricity board but that's how it is at least I, I i am i'm still saving a fortune in my electricity bills um terry says it's better than nothing and he says yes i work in the energy sector so for very interesting i didn't know that terry didn't know that at all uh, there are various companies that do some sort of energy storage systems and i've looked into those but they are thousands of pounds you know to save a very small amount it just just wouldn't be worth doing and they are basically all batteries you know i mean if you've got some sort of technical know-how what you want is those big big um leisure batteries downstairs well each one of those i think even the big ones only hold about 120 amp hours of electricity you'd need 20 of those paralleled together to store the electricity that you would need at night and it just wouldn't be worth doing do you agree with me terry he knows all about these things terry are you are you an engineer or are you in the offices or something like that i do not know um, Mark Whittle says, is that why the show is on at 12 o'clock to save money? No, of course it's not. <laughs> the reason it's on at 12 is because I work at nights. That's why. Although I have a night off at the moment. Sunday, I have, no, I have Sunday nights off at the moment. Now, I did say I was going to slow down. But blow me down, I get these Facebook messages from someone and uh, has asked me to do a Sunday night somewhere. So I've taken that on, and that's good. I now I now have, what, what are my days off now? I now have three Fridays off in every four because uh, the place that I work at on Fridays, they, 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 they wanna, they've taken a completely different direction. Uh, the Black Cab in Camden, which is, uh, it is changing beyond all recognition, to be honest. Um, and actually, you know, it did have to change because it just wasn't working as it was. However, I'm still there once a month, so I'm quite pleased uh, about that. So that's that's my solar panel news. Now, I was going to tell you... Um, oh, Mother's Day. Yes, Mother's Day. Boys and girls, 30th of March. Sunday, the 30th of March, Mother's Day. Now, look. Your mummies are the most important person in the world to you. Yes, they are. You need to do something for Mother's Day. Okay? I want you to do something for Mother's Day. But do not drive on that day. It's a nightmare. They make me laugh, these people. For a year, for all, a whole year round, they don't visit their mums. Mother's Day, they're in the car and off they go. They all come back at the same time. Watch out for driving on Mother's Day. And, um... I saw a lovely little story <coughs> in this week's Waitrose Weekend. Oh, yes. Waitrose is the preferred supermarket of United Kingdom talk. I think we should, we should be, this show should be sponsored by, we should have a big Waitrose behind us like that or something. 
a big <laughs> a Waitrose sign because I love Waitrose. I've got two favourite people in there. There's there's Jackie. She used to work at Sainsbury's. We like Jackie. And I think the other lady's name is Linda. And actually, I was in there yesterday. And uh, Linda was... I, I could hear all these little children. And there's hundreds and hundreds of children all gathered round Linda. I think, I'm think i sure it's Linda, her name. And she was walking down the aisle, and they all had these clipboards. And I'm like, all right, Linda. She said, oh, hello. I said, what's going on here today? Oh, they're doing a survey. And I thought, what a nice little thing. What I, I bet she had a wonderful time with all those kids. I was screaming and shouting at her. And she was saying, right, write down this. And they had to go and find various things and write them down on their clipboard. And they were so high. And, I was, and I'm like, well, what's all this then? Oh, oh, they're doing a survey. And she had three of them with her at this time. I was standing by the, um, by the potatoes, which I'm not eating at the moment, incidentally. Potatoes. No, pot I've done very well the diet, you know. No potatoes, no bread, no sweets, no chocolates, no cakes. Oh, it's killing me. It's absolutely killing me. But I've lost about seven or eight pounds now. I did think it was about nine or ten, but I reweighed myself and um, be, and uh, 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 took a picture. And it was it's about seven or eight pounds I've lost now. So I'm quite pleased about that, just by cutting out those things. And so I says, um, is, is it a survey? They said, yeah. Oh, right. OK, so I put my basket down on the floor. Well, I didn't have a basket. I had a trolley. So I stopped, I stopped trolleying. I go... Folding my arms. Oh, OK, kids. Right, I love surveys. Come on, ask me some questions. And then, oh, um, uh, uh, like, you know, so high. Just about coming up to my waist, these kids. Uh, oh, then, oh, uh, um, oh, do you always do your shopping here? Yes, I do. I love it. I love Waitrose. And that is my favourite person over there who you're lucky enough to be being looked after by, for today. And, she, and this, this shop assistant smiling. And uh, I, I love it. I love Waitrose. The service is fantastic. It really is fantastic. Something's just come up on my screen. What are all those things down the side there? Q&As, capture, cameraman, control room. Loads of things have just come up next to me on the screen. I don't know what they mean. Do they, <laughs> do they mean anything? I don't know. So I love it. So we need, we need, someone needs to tell Waitrose that I speak about them every time. And we need a nice big Waitrose sign, possibly lit up in green behind me. This show is sponsored by Waitrose. I'd love that. Anyway, in their paper, Waitrose Weekend. Right? Waitrose Weekend. Okay. It says, um, whether it's cooking your favourite tea, picking you up when you fell over and putting a plaster on your knee or standing in the lashing rain while you played sports, we all have reasons to thank our mums. Oh, well, I mean, I can I can do the plaster on the knee. I can do the, the favourite tea. Oh, what what was my favourite dinner? Well, there were so many of them. Mum used to do, uh, uh, when I, before I become a vegetarian, uh, mum used to do this beef casserole. Oh, my God, it was to die for. It really was. A lot of the time, in my later teenagers, I was really ungrateful for some of the meals I had. And, you know, it comes to whack you around the face when your mum and dad have died. All these wrong things that you used to do. And I remember I was, I was always on this blooming diet thing, you know, um, trying to lose weight all the time and, and what have you. Always. I always seemed to be on this thing. And I would go out there for dinner. And then I'd have my dinner and I'd feel quite full up afterwards. I've sort of had enough now. And she would say, and then out would come this, like, apple sponge or something like that. I said, oh, I can't eat that, Mum. Oh, but I've made it specially for you. I, I can't eat that. I'm sorry, Mum. And she'd take it back outside. And I think, how bloody ungrateful was that? You know, if only we could turn the clock back. But we can't. We can't turn the clock back, can we? So please, if you've got a Mum who's doing things like that, please be grateful. Learn from me. Learn from me for that, all right? Uh, as for the watching, watching me play sports, no, I don't think so. I didn't do that. I didn't do sports playing at all. I hated sports. Oh, I hated sports at school and swimming and all that. 
It says, this year you can do it in style. Every thanks mum message posted on the Waitrose website or in Facebook and Twitter will help create an enormous display being built at London's Kew Gardens by a high-profile horticulturalist. Look how, how well I said that word. Horticulturalist. Uh, this bloke made the biggest bouquet in 2010 using 12,000 cut flowers and floral projects have adorned many of Elton John's parties will build the 3D display. And that, isn't that a nice thing? Anyone who posts a message in it... Uh, <coughs> uh, let me see. <clears throat> I'm looking forward to using flowers that represent a personal message to a mum who created a wonderful design that will celebrate mothers everywhere. We will start on Wednesday and work all through the night to get it ready for Mother's Day. The display of about 10,000 flowers will resemble a giant Mother's Day card. It's expected to measure around 3.5 metres by 1.8 metres and will be unveiled to the public on Thursday the 27th of March. Anyone who posts a message is in with a chance of winning a gift on Mother's Day. You have from today, Thursday, until Wednesday next week. So that's Wednesday the... One minute. Wednesday the 26th. Um, where's that gone now? I've lost the place. When is it? Until Wednesday the 26th. To leave an online note to your mum. Post your hashtag thanks mum message on Facebook and Twitter or head to waitrose.com forward slash uh, thanks mum. So what a lovely thing uh, for Waitrose to do at uh, Kew Gardens there. Fantastic. Like the idea of that. Please, Waitrose, sponsor this show. Only £100 a show. I mean, you can't get any better. Or well, failing that, could I have a discount on my lovely Waitrose shopping? All right, uh, Terry H, he says he's a team manager in the office. There we are. Voiceover artist says, Chris, with the closure of IBM's manufacturing facility, the street gangs and toughs took over. Our town converted Mother's Day to Mugger's Day. I do hope not. That's it for me today. Thank you very much, boys and girls. Uh, I'll see you again next Saturday at 12 o'clock UK time for our live show. You have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching and listening. Bye-bye now.